In today's lesson, we're going to have a look at future value annuities. In grade 11, you learned that when there's more than one deposit or withdrawal into an account, you can determine the value of each amount on its own and then put them together. In grade 12, we are however going to work with annuities. And an annuity is when equal or the same payment is made at regular intervals. Examples of annuities could be a savings account where you invest the same amount every month to save up for your future planning. And this can then also be a pension fund that you will withdraw once you retire. Then it can also be regular repayments on a loan. So if you, for example, have a car or a home loan, then you will repay a specific amount each month for that loan. Today, however, we are focusing on future value annuities. And this is when you have regular equal payments that build up to a big amount in the future. And for future value annuities, we have a new formula. The F is for the collective value in the future. X is the value of the regular payment you will make. I is still the interest rate per period. But now there's a difference. N is not the number of periods anymore, but now the number of payments. This formula was deducted from determining the value of each of the monthly payments separately and then forming a geometric series. We, however, do not have to do that every time. We can simply use the formula. Example 1. James opens a savings account and immediately deposits 500 Rand. After this, he continues to deposit 500 Rand at the end of each month for four years. The interest rate remains fixed at 8% per annum compounded monthly. Our first question, how much will he have in the savings account at the end of four years? Here, a timeline will help you to make sense of all the information given. Firstly, James opened the savings account and immediately deposits 500 Rand into the account. It is important to read the word immediately here. After this, he continues to deposit 500 Rand at the end of each month for four years, which means that at the end of the first month, he deposits another 500 Rand into the account. He continues for four years worth of months, and that means four times 12, and that will give us 48 months. So his final payment was made at the end of the last month or the end of the 48th month. The interest rate is 8%, which is also compounded monthly. Here we are going to make use of our new future value formula because we are working with annuities, regular payments, and we want the future value of the account. And now we can continue to substitute into the formula. Our X value is the payment, and that will be 500 Rand. The interest rate is 8%, and it is compounded monthly. And now the important part is N, the number of payments. Here we have a period of 48 months. Because he made a payment at the end of each month, he made 48 payments. But he made another extra payment at the beginning of the first month because he started paying immediately. This means that in total he made 49 payments. You can also remember the following formula to determine the number of payments. And that is taking the last payment minus the first payment plus 1. And that plus 1 comes from the fact that you want to include the first and the last payment. And in the denominator, we again have our interest rate of 8% that is compounded monthly. When you determine this on your calculator, you will see that he will have 28,862 Rand and 79 cents in his account. 
And this is then a very good example of why it is important to plan ahead. Because even though James made 49 payments of 500 Rand, meaning that he deposited 24,500 Rand into the account, at the end of the four years, he had 28,862 Rand in that account. This means that he received an interest of 4,362 Rand and 79 cents. Question B. At the end of the two years, James stops making payments. He leaves the money in the account for another two years. How much money will he have in the account at the end of these two years? Here it is important to realize that for the last two years, this is not an annuity anymore because there are no more regular payments. So here we are going back to using our grade 11 formula for compound interest with a once-off amount. So here our starting value is the 28,862 Rand and 79 cents that was in the account after four years and it still receives the interest of 8% compounded monthly for the extra two years worth of months. This means that after another two years he will have 33,000 852 rand and 82 cents in his account. So it is important to remember that the annuity formula is used when you have equal regular payments and the compound interest formula is used for one amount. Example 2. Megan wants to save up 1 million rand by her 30th birthday. On her 18th birthday she opens a savings account. She makes equal monthly payments into the account starting one month after the account was opened. The last payment is made on her 30th birthday. The account pays interest at 15% per annum compounded monthly. How much money will she have to save each month to reach her goal? Megan wants 1 million rand on her 30th birthday in the future. Therefore, the 1 million rand is the F value in the formula. She wants this money on her 30th birthday and starts saving on her 18th birthday and that means she will have 12 years to save. An important part to read is that she opens the account on her 18th birthday but that she starts payments one month after she opened the account. That means her first payment is at T1 and we do not know the value of the payment. For the next 12 years she will make a payment every month and that means the last payment on her 30th birthday will be at T144. This 144 comes from the 12 years worth of months. So let's substitute into our future value annuity formula. We know that the future value she is saving up for is 1 million Rand. We do not know X, the regular payment, but we do know that the interest rate is 15% that is compounded monthly. The number of payments here is 144 because in the 144 months, she did not make an extra payment because she did not start immediately. Or you can choose to use the formula again. That is the last payment minus the first payment, which was only at term 1, plus 1, and that will give us the 144 payments. And in our denominator, again, we have our interest rate of 15% that is compounded monthly. To solve x here, we are going to do a bit of algebra manipulation. I'm going to start off by taking the divided by i and multiplying with it on the left, and then I'm going to take the whole bracket that is multiplied to x and divide with that on the left. This calculation will then give a monthly payment of 2,508 rand and 77 cents. 
So if Megan can save this amount each month for the next 12 years, on her 30th birthday, she will have a million rand.